A language barrier, a new way to fill a shortage of Arabic translators is raising some red flags. We'll get some insight from the director of the National Translation Center. It's a critical shortage at a critical time. There are not enough Arab-speaking government linguists to translate sensitive documents and tapes. So the CIA and the FBI have a plan to tackle the backlog, a plan some consider radical and risky. A veteran language specialist for the National Security Agency, Everett Jordan, is now director of the National Virtual Translation Center. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us, Mr. Jordan. Tell us, what is this new center all about? What will happen there? This new center is a virtual concept that we um, had put together through the Congress and the Director of Central Intelligence and Director of the FBI. What we wanted to be able to do was get information to translators all across the country, wherever they are, who can translate national security information that is unclassified as well as classified. Not everything that we're going to be sending out is classified, and the things that are will be held in, con in controlled areas. But one of the um, things that we want to be able to do is reach those translators who can't come to Washington or can't travel overseas. This is a new concept and the way we do that. Historically, we've always done something that involves bringing people to Washington or bringing people overseas or bringing them to the material. This time, we're bringing the material to them. But there are a couple of other things that are in question about how this will be done and yeah. who will be chosen to do it. What about the screening process? What about possible infiltration as far as uh, someone who coming and wanting to do a job like this but really not knowing who they are? Can you talk to us about that screening process? Oh, yeah. Um, the screening process we use right now is the FBI's process. The FBI is supporting us in the background investigations and all the testing and the elicitation that we ask of anyone who's coming in to work with the National Virtual Translation Center. There will be a national agency check for wants and warrants, credit history, work history, and affiliations that we do for everyone who's going to be coming in, whether we're going to be allowing them a top secret clearance or not. This is the first step in bringing folks in. So we're doing our best to weed out um, the unsavory elements that try, might try to infiltrate even an NVTC type of operation. But in fact, just to be clear, this is actually the lowest level of security clearance, is it not? Yes, it is. It's the lowest level of security clearance, and the information that we'll be um, sending them is not, um, it's not classified. And the um, security clearance issue is, a security clearance has to do with secret and top secret. Um, the information that we're doing is a check. If we're going to put someone through it um, for security clearance for top secret, that's going to take several months and perhaps a year, depending on when the person come, comes in, what their background is, and what they intend to do and what we need from them. Let me ask you, just so people understand, how bad is the shortage? I mean, how many people are you looking for for help here? Oh, we're looking for hundreds of people. Hmm. The issue here is not just the language. It has to do with various subject areas within the language. We need translators who are capable of understanding legal terms, medical terms, um, financial terms, biological, chemical terms, military, paramilitary. It's very, it's very diverse. It's not just a matter of knowing the language, but having the skill to translate that language that um, we really need people in and also the um, specific subject areas. And for that, you never have enough people to do. To do well, it in fact, you bring up a good point. I'm just curious what your reaction is. Uh, back about a year ago now, I believe it was November 14th of last year, there were several linguists, uh, a number uh, of nine that I have in my information here, six of them that spoke Arabic who were released from the army because they had admitted to being gay. Uh, is that sort of thing something that really takes a toll on how many people can not only help with the situation but then train others as well? Well, that specific issue, that's a U.S. Army issue. For the NVTC, we take anyone who's qualified. If they apply, we check them out, we test them for their skills in both the language that they claim to know, as well as their English composition. We do the background checks on them, and if everything's fine, then everything's fine. We hire qualified people, whoever they are and wherever they're coming from, as long as they're U.S. citizens, of course. All right, Everett Jordan, we appreciate your time this morning oh, talking this to us. This has been great. All right, talking to us about the American Translators Conference and what will happen with the National Virtual Translation Center. Appreciate your time. Oh, you got it. Thank you.